Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we're going to be tearing into all the water damage that was done in the very back corner near the chimney on this shop. Before I can get a roof put on this place, that has to be fixed. And I'm ready, almost, to get this roof started, right? So, if you're not familiar with the channel, normally I don't do construction type work, but I have been for the last six months trying to, I've been on a mission really, to get this place repaired. This shop was literally falling down. Look back through some videos for the last few months if you're interested to see how bad this place was, because I would be willing to bet that it's probably one of the worst places you'd ever seen. And that's not easy to say. That's been fixed anyway. So thanks for watching and let's get started on this roof. So I'm hoping within the next couple weeks that I can get this roof put on, this place, and then get the floor done. You know, everything takes a lot longer than you expect, especially when it comes to construction, because there's always problems that you run into that were unexpected. Or, you know, it's always worse than you, than you originally think, right? The problems are, anyway. But I have to get up here, strip back this covering a bit, pull the tin off in this corner and fix this truss, and possibly that seal plate wouldn't want to put a roof on that. Let's uh, peel it back and see what we can do. So where they had this chimney here, obviously it had leaked behind the chimney and rotted out this truss, or at least some of it. It's actually not as bad as what I thought it would be, um, you know, just looking before I removed the chimney, but it is bad. And it does need replaced this section or at least capped so that's what we need to do let's pull this tin off this piece because you know it'll have to be capped on the back side right because this gets sheeted so we'll remove what we can or what we need to that's damaged and repair the rest So I'm going to pull up this piece of tin so we can expose the back side of this truss. Why am I taking up that piece? I need to take up this piece. Smart guy. You don't stand on it while you take all the fasteners out of it. So there was no flashing or anything around this chimney. Uh, just use some sort of uh, tar to seal around it. And I'm sure it probably leaked, I don't know, three weeks probably after it was installed. This stuff just gets hard and breaks. And obviously a tin roof swells when it gets hot and contracts when it gets cold. And anything that's not real flexible it's just going to leak or crack and break. <clears throat> so that's what led to all the damage here. A good flashing job would have probably kept this good for, you know, forever really. So I'm just going to get out the rest of these nails without turning this into a sled. That shoots me off the roof. Um, I just got a haircut as well. Uh, I got a kind of a funny story. <clears throat> it's been a little while ago. But I went to one of these places where they cut your hair for a relatively cheap price. I haven't been doing that lately. I've got a, a family member who cuts hair and does a really good job. But anyway, went and got my hair cut, got home, and my wife, Elizabeth, is like, what in the world did they do to you? And I, I couldn't see it, obviously, but on the back of my head, I guess the guard come off of the trimmers or the clippers. They did not even tell me they jacked up my hair. But I had a huge bald spot right in the very back of my head. 
And for the longest time, until it growed out and was unnoticeable, I colored the back of my head every morning with a Sharpie. It worked, actually. It blended in pretty well and nobody ever mentioned it or noticed it or was nice enough not to mention it. But yeah, you know, some of these places will jack your head up for you and they won't even tell you about it. Needless to say, I haven't been back there. Alright, that should be it. Wow. Definitely got a lot of cleanup to do. There's been critters up here and uh, huge amounts of wasps. So it's not as bad uh, damage as I thought, but I gotta get this cleaned up then we'll get a good look at it. So there's a look at the back side. Really, from this side, you wouldn't even know it was damaged, but it's actually pretty, pretty bad. But we can easily scab a board in on top of this, and it won't be a problem at all. The seal plate is perfectly fine. You know, just got into the end of it a little bit. All these slats, I guess, what you'd call them, have to come off. Um, these uh, will be replaced with full sheeting. And this spatia board, which runs along the entire uh, edge of the roof, is going to be replaced as well. Because it's been gotten into by bugs, just no longer good. So I'm going to cut this just to get it out of my way and remove these pieces. Now you can kind of start to see see the damage here. Come on. God. And that one nail does not want to come out. There's always one in there.
So there's definitely not much left of that. I just decided to cut it out completely because there's so many carpenter ants and stuff in it. You know, originally, I was going to go up there, leave this in place, go to the back side of it, put a new piece of lumber on the back side, screw it in. You know, Bob's your uncle, right? We see that done all the time. But because of its infestation, I just decided to cut it out. I don't want them transferring over to the, to the new timber. And the top runner of this truss is going to get extended one foot over the original. That way, they're all going to get extended a foot to extend the overhang, make this roof have a larger umbrella over the shop. That's the idea at the moment. And if I decide against that, for some reason, um, I can just cut the excess off. But at the moment, that's the plan. So let's remake this piece. We'll put it in place and scab it in just like you would any other patch. So in my last video, I got a real kick out of one of the comments that asked me if this thing was two-cycle or straight unleaded. Obviously, they're making fun of the age of this thing. But I bought this probably five years ago, six years ago, at a flea market for five bucks, still in the original box, with the paperwork and every piece of kit that come with it new, even the Allen wrench to adjust the foot on this thing. The cord was bound and tied with a wire tie, and it only had a couple, couple little scuffs on the foot of this thing. So whoever had bought it didn't use it much. Come with a box of blades as well, which was worth more than five bucks. So an old tool, yes. Heavy, yes. Still grounded. Obviously it has the full aluminum frame, which wouldn't be good if it wasn't grounded. But you get the idea. This thing probably from the 70s, if I was just guessing, which I am. But probably as good as or better than anything you're going to buy these days. That's my thoughts anyway. But I thought that was funny. You know, it looks like a 70s tool, doesn't it? But old doesn't make it bad, that's for sure. So I'm also going to scab this backside, probably, a, I don't know, probably a piece of uh, plywood. These are four inch GRKs, which are structural screws. Not that it really matters, to be honest, in this situation, but they're good stuff. the Flintstone jigsaw.
fall off. There we go. It's our new truss section. I didn't cut the tail of the truss or the end of it there. I'm just going to wait, cut them all at once, make sure they're all good and straight. But man, there is nothing wrong with that. So this piece of truss is pretty much ready to be reinstalled, although I'm not completely satisfied with it. I want to get some truss plates like they used from the factory. You see these metal plates that are sandwiched on to hold these sections of truss together. And I'm going to put those on the outside facing part of this truss because there's just not room to use the plywood on this side of the truss given this, this one's position in the building. It's the 
most back truss and my sheeting comes right up next to this so there's not going to be room for this type of support on this side. So because the tail on the truss is longer than the originals, I had to cut that fascia board back a little bit in order for it to extend, extend out. Now I can always cap, cap that back in if I need to, but I probably, probably won't be necessary, so we're just going to get it out of the way. So even though this seal plate has got some damage on the edge there, obviously from the uh, water and from the ants, it doesn't look like the ants have gotten into it, and it's still plenty solid, just right back from the damage. So I'm just going to leave that as is. You know, once this gets sheeted and dried out, the damage will stop progressing through the wood, and, and it should be fine. Get that other ant. It's not your home anymore. But you get the idea. This is perfectly fine to reuse, even though it's damaged. It won't hurt a thing. Took my shirt in. Nobody wants to see my butt. Let's put this thing in place, see how it fits. Hopefully it's a good fit. Well, it actually fits better than I thought that it would, given that old one was rotten, and I just modeled this one after the piece that cut off, right? But that's good. Now, the main thing is that we get a good connection between our existing truss and our patch, right? So it acts as one piece again. And then we'll tie it in at the end. That'll be it. You know, truss is awesome that they can get so much strength out of some 2 before 4s just carefully engineered, right? Uh, otherwise, you'd have huge logs, you know, just placed, ran, post throughout the building, uh, like the old Roman columns to hold your roof up. I may fall off, but it won't. attach the plate to it and that'll be pretty much installed. Good. 
enough. So that turned out, I mean, better than I expected, actually. Fits perfect, which is kind of surprising given that the pattern that I took it off of was so rotted, but, you know, worked out really good. And that should last forever, as long as it's kept dry. And should be plenty, uh, plenty strong enough to withstand anything, given that this shingle, or this shingle, I got shingles on the brain, this, uh, truss, wow, that took me a minute this truss was completely rotted out, right? So what might as well not have had one there to begin with, um, given how bad it was. But you get the idea. It's replaced now, plenty good enough from now on. Now I'm getting really close to getting the roof put on this thing. I'm still waiting on a couple, couple items, basically detail items. The shingles are here, the sheeting's here. I'm waiting on my underlayment, which most people would just go put felt paper on the roof. I'm going to be using a product called Ice and Water Shield. Basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you put down your sheeting first, then you put down a vapor barrier, and then you put your shingles on top of it. Most people will go for their, as far as their vapor barrier, they'll use a product called felt paper. And it works, right? But I'm going to go with a product called Ice and Water Shield, and basically it's a peel and stick membrane. So you brush off or sweep off your sheeting really good once it's down. Get it good and clean. You peel this stuff and you stick it on. Very similar to the stuff that I use to pan out the windows. It's a self-sealing product. Like if you drive a nail through it, it pretty much closes up around that nail and helps to prevent leaks. And more commonly used in northern climates than you know, where I'm located, where they deal with ice buildup and water that backs up under the shingles and causes leaks and stuff. You know, some I think it's required actually in some states uh, that they use it due to the problem of ice bat and water pushing back up under the shingles. This stuff's designed to stop water damage if that occurs. It's basically a second roof in a way. And they're proud of it, but it's really good stuff and it's got a pretty good reputation. So I've decided I'm going to use that on this roof in place of felt paper. Now I'm just still waiting on that to arrive. I've got a few rolls down here. I'll show it to you. It's pretty neat stuff. But other than that, you know, we're waiting on a just a couple more small things and this roof will be ready to start getting tore off and replaced. So this is a very similar product to what I'm going to be using on the roof. Al brought me down some stuff that he had had left, just a couple of uh, partial rolls. He inter actually introduced me to this product and you know I got to looking into it, found it was just a far superior product to ordinary felt paper like this. I'm not an expert on roofing, but I do want to show you the difference in between the two and maybe you know you can look into this for yourself. So when it comes to these two products, felt paper ice and water shield, the major thing that you'll notice if you look them up is the difference in price. This stuff's substantially higher than felt paper, but it's just a better product, right? The major differences in between these two that I've seen is that this is a peel and stick product, right? You peel off the back, it sticks to your sheeting, it sticks to itself, and it's self-healing, self right? You drive a nail through it and the nail does a pretty good job, or this stuff does a pretty good job of sealing around that nail. None of which felt paper does, right? Doesn't stick to itself, doesn't stick to the roof, doesn't seal around nails. It is water repellent for quite some time, uh, the felt paper, and if you get a shingle blowed off and fix it relatively quick, this stuff will keep your house dry. But this stuff's almost like a second roof in a way. 
you know, you're going to pay more for it, but if you're putting a roof on your place, you're going to pay a lot no matter which way you look at it. It's just in one of the more expensive things you can do to a home. I personally want to do it one time and one time only, at least if that's possible, you know, and check the leaking roof off the list. So this is what I'm going to use. So check out this old drill. I've been moving stuff and opened up an old cabinet drawer that I hadn't looked in forever and this was stuffed back in there and I remember somebody gave me a bunch of stuff in a bucket and this was at the bottom and it just didn't end up in the trash for some reason couldn't tell you why but it is it is a it says home workshop tool I'll get you a good shot of the tag because it's definitely awesome home workshop tool model 303 Cummins series B made in the USA by John Ulster and it is 115 volts AC only and 19 amps. It's a quarter inch drill with a horribly bent uh, quarter. Well, I don't know if that's a quarter inch bit, but it's a bent bit, that's for sure. Totally aluminum body, no ground lug. So it's one of those, uh, you know, one of those type that you risk death when you use it. Let's plug it in and I'll show you because it, <laughs> it's, completely dangerous not simply because it's not grounded but check out how the switch works on it pulled in is stop right it's not drilling you got it pulled in but when you pull the switch up and let it out it comes on and stays on right until you pull the switch down and then push it down to lock it how weird is that I'm sure there was no safety issues with this thing but it does work, and I'm not fried yet. I did, you know, test it first and see if it was alive. But there you go. Some of you guys may have actually owned one of those at one time. But the fact that it says the home workshop tool uh, on the tag is pretty neat, right? This is probably at a time when, you know, these drills were just a n not... Very few people had one, right? If you'd owned one of these, you were probably, you know, awesome compared, well, your neighbor thought you were awesome anyway. So, <laughs> let's get you a good look at the tag. There's something about that that's cool. Can't quite put my finger on it. All right, guys, that's it this week. That's all I have time for anyway. Glad to get that roof or that truss fixed. At least now I can move forward with the roof because none of the rest of it has any real major water damage that's going to need any attention. So now I can come in, you know, get the roof done and not worry about that holding either myself or anybody else up, right, when it comes time to put the roof down. Now, the majority of my week was not spent repairing that truss. It was actually spent cleaning this place out, although you can't tell at the moment. Cabinets, stuff like that, general storage. I went through almost everything. I still got some stuff to go through and just got rid of all the things that I thought, well, I may use that, but never have in the last three years. You know, sometimes it's time to let go, and that's what I've been doing, because when this place is done, it's going to be a clean, organized, you know, nice place to work, not a storage shed for stuff that I may end up using in the future because that doesn't, those two, a good workspace and that don't go well together. So thanks for watching guys. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. It is much appreciated. I wonder what Chloe's barking at. A little update on, well, unfortunately I have not seen walnut or peanut in the last, well, walnut in the last three weeks, peanut in the last two. So. Yeah, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Little hazelnut's doing well, though. She's, uh, she's growing quick. But I worry about the other two. But what do you do, right? Go search the woods for squirrels? <laughs> they look the same, right? So, hey, Chloe. So that's it. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. Viewers, patrons, subscribers. You guys are will keep me going on this, and I appreciate it more than you know. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Hey, girl. What are you doing? The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna 
scream since the day.